combine some of your favorite photos with scrapbook supplies to create a wonderful wall light today on the Scrapbook Showground. Hi, I'm Sandy Genovese and welcome to the Scrapbook Showground. You know, I was wandering through my local IKEA store and I came across some cool things that I thought would be wonderful to turn into scrapbook projects. I love being able to look around my house and to enjoy my photos in more ways than just in scrapbooks. Although, of course, I love them in scrapbooks as well. I came across this fun wall light, $7.99 for, the, for the, the basic light. And you can see, once I've decorated it and customized it with photos, it's going to be a really fun light, in this case, to go in Caitlin's room because it's got pictures of her and um, her brothers and her cousins at the beach. So here is the one that I've created um, that's already decorated. And now let me show you how we got there. Wandering the store, this is what I found, and I thought, mm, how great if I could take this off and then put anything there I wanted to. So if you look, um, it's just got a screw that you have to take and use a Phillips head screwdriver to just remove this one screw. It's incredibly easy. So once you take that off, it allows you to pull this apart and it has just a little 5 watt bulb so it's not strong enough that it's going to burn or hurt anything the cord was up there but it's meant to go on the wall it has mounting brackets on the back so this when you undo it all is going to just go down the wall and then get plugged into a socket and there's a an on off switch right on um, the that's connected right on the cord itself so in order for this to kind of get out of the way when I took this front off, I discovered it's not even glued on. I mean, talk about easy. It's just attached because, I'll bring this around so you can see, it's just folded over the lip and it pulls right off and then you have this wonderful blank surface that you can decorate however you want. So of course, I thought about photos. When I took this, uh, these I think these are frog angels. <laughs> I think. I'm not sure. Uh, they're cute. But um, I use this as a pattern. And notice that the overlap that they had was this tiny little strip. I thought, you know, it was going to be easier for me to reassemble it if I made this folded flap larger. So I put this down on just regular copy paper. I wanted it thin enough that the light's going to shine through. So I laid this down like on my copy paper like so, and I marked the bottom and I marked the top, and then I went back with a ruler and my bone folder and laid it down and just created the fold light on the left side and the fold on the right side. I hope I said that right facing you. I never know if I get it backwards. Then I've gone ahead and I've folded it so that while I'm working on the project, I make sure that I know that this is the part that's going to show. Some of my decoration will go off the edge, but I know that I need to make sure if I'm centering things that it's centered on this usable space. Now to create the area that looks like the ocean at the bottom, you can just use vellum and tear it yourself, but I ended up having these sticker strips that have the same look and it's just even a little bit easier and faster. So what I did is I left the base sticker in place and I'm going to take this middle one and peel it off. And I'm going to layer it right back over the top of that base sticker. And my hand's in the way. I can't really tell how close I am to the edge. And then I'm going to take the final, the top, and I'm going to just do the same thing with it. I'll peel it off and I'll try to keep my hands out of the way. It's so nice having it be a sticker because it's already got the adhesive. And I'm going to layer this over the top again. Because it's meant to look like the waves of the ocean, it doesn't need to be perfect. It's fine if it's not. There's no such thing. You don't have to worry about it being straight or parallel or anything like that. 
So you kind of create this fun look that looks like this layered ocean effect. And then I peeled the whole thing off and I'm going to take it and I decided that I wanted to just line it up with the bottom. So I'm going to sort of start in the center and see if I can get this so it's lined up with the bottom and go across the edge. And if for some reason, you know, it's stuck off the edge, I could always go back with my scissors and trim anything off. I could have trimmed off the overlap that stuck out, but I thought that it was actually a bit, little bit better to go right over the fold. I'm going to trim off the excess that sticks past the folded tab off of both sides. So I'll trim the one side and I'll turn it over and I'll trim the other side. And then I'm going to go back and now I want to reinforce those folds that I made because I want this vellum now, those vellum stickers, to have a crease, a fold mark in it as well. So that now gives me the feeling of ocean at the bottom. Then I took my photos and um, if you haven't heard me mention it before, the Kodak printer that I use allows me to print um, my photos in multiple sizes. In this case, I decided that I wanted, I took my 4x6 photos and I printed them into this 2x3 size. So what I'm going to do is build a, kind of like a little mosaic. I'm going to put the, the photo of Caitlin standing and then I'm going to put, this is the picture of her and her brothers and her cousins. And I'll place this one, and in this upper corner, I'm going to put um, another effect like the bottom with using the wave stickers. Well, I'll go back and I'll handwrite her name. To get this centered from side to side, I cut a little piece of paper, and in this case, um, based on the size of my photos, my paper strip ends up being just like two and an eighth. Um, however, who knows what size the photos or the decorations are that you're going to use. But it is helpful if you want both sides to match to create a little guide. So I know that when this is lined up with this edge, I'm going to tuck this right against the edge. And that's going to give me where I want that first place, that first photo to go. So I'll take my adhesive and... In this case, you want to use an aggressive adhesive because this is going to be curled around a lamp. So something um, that's removable is, is not the best choice. You want to use a permanent adhesive um, or something aggressive. So I'm going to place my adhesive down. I'm going to line it up with this edge. And then um, how much space there is at the top and the bottom is, is up to you. So when it's tucked against this edge, that gives me that first. Then I'm going to place adhesive on the next photo and I'll go ahead, this time I'll put my guide on the other side and I do want this to line up with the bottom of the first photo that I glued in. Oops! <laughs> Upside down would not be good. So what I'm going to do is position this and hold this with one hand while I see I my hand is in my way I can't tell if I have it lined up with the bottom of the other photo so I'm gonna see all right that's the spacing is right about there now I'm gonna lift this since I have barely touched it and I'm gonna make it straight I can see if this little almost like a grout line is straight so there's the second one the third one the third photo I'm gonna just place directly over the top and I want whatever spacing I've got here to be repeated here. So I'm going to then create this. It's almost like tiling a bathroom. Um, not that I've ever tiled a bathroom, but I've watched a lot of those shows. Um, at this point, now I'm ready to add in what would be like the title of the scrapbook page itself. Well, I took the same sticker strips and I added the layers together to create this that's going to actually sit here and it's going to say Caitlin but I'm going to first take my pen and because I'm marking onto something um, the vellum usually has a bit of a coating on it so I'm going to use a permanent marker and I'm just going to write right on top of that her name
and the permanent ink dries pretty quickly, but I think to play it safe, if I can find tweezers, I'll pull it off with tweezers so that I'm not touching um, the word that I just wrote. Let's see if I can do this. And then I'm going to, I've trimmed this ahead so that this is the same width as this photo that's sitting here. And this way I can set this in here. The top is meant to look wavy, so it doesn't have to exactly line up. It's meant to look wavy like the beach. And I'm not going to push on that middle section just yet until I'm sure that that black ink has dried. Now, that creates those areas. Now to create what I wanted was sort of the effect of bubbles. Now you could take, once again, vellum, and you could take different circle punches and punch out the vellum in order to create what looks like the bubbles in the water. Um, or in this case, I'm going to just take a sticker sheet. And I like, you know, for some of them to look like they go like right under the photos. I have different sizes. So you want to do, you know, some that are smaller, some that are larger, creating, I try to create like triangles for some reason that's just pleasing to the eye and it looks good. I also like for some of the vellum pieces to overlap because that's when vellum looks its best is when it's all overlapped. I did have one last element. If I bring this up and show you just, I, I thought, you know, I liked that it was calm and serene and felt, you know, kind of beachy to me, but I wanted this little pop of color. It, this is a flower sticker, but to me, it kind of felt a little bit like a sun up in the corner. And I have these stickers. It came off of this sheet. I could either make on mine, I could make a smaller or a larger sun to go in that spot. I also thought, you know, it would be fun whenever I'm at the beach. It does seem like there's a lot of dragonflies around. So I thought what I might do is take, just because I'd like to see what it looks like, and I think I'm going to take the, the dragonfly that's up in this corner, and I'm going to go ahead and peel it. It's a sticker, so I'm going to just peel it off of the backing. Um, and I'll try to keep using the tweezers so my hands aren't too much in the way. And I'm going to go ahead and just add this little pop of color by overlapping this on that little wave section. So it's just an alternative. So, you know, as I'm holding this up and I'm wondering why there's such a big space at the top compared to the bottom, I'm realizing that I forgot to trim off when I use this as a guide for my fold marks, I forgot to trim the top. So what I'm going to do is lay this back down and I'm going to mark with a pencil where I'm going to trim this and I'm going to walk over to the paper cutter and I'm going to trim this top off. However, you can see that what's going to happen is I'm going to lose these bubbles and I want to save those. So I'm going to right now see usually if it's just been placed down like it was. Yeah, I can pull this off and I can position this. I still want my little sort of triangle effect between these three areas. So now I'm going to head over to the paper cutter and I'm going to trim this top off and then we're going to see how to assemble it. All right, so now that I've actually trimmed the top off to match my pattern, now it's ready. Of course, once again, you would put, you know, the bubbles all the way around, but once you have it completely decorated, I'm going to jump ahead so that I can show you how easy it is to actually assemble this. In the process, let me show you how the mechanism of the lamp works. The shade is plastic and it has on the bottom these two tabs that are at the bottom and they're meant to fit into these two slots. So once you have the paper wrapped around, I'm going to just stick that into the tabs and then I will close the whole thing up and if you look at the top then I'm going to place the screw back and use the Phillips head screwdriver to attach it and that's that's just how easy it is. So let's see if it really goes together. The first one I did actually did go together really easily. Of course I had a little more room than this but you're going to wrap this around and I'll try to do it so you can see so that the fold goes inside and then it's going to wrap around the edge and then the fold goes in. You can see the folds just wrap around and it gives you that decoration. And then I'm going to take the lamp and I'll place those tabs into the notches like I just referenced. And then I need to make sure that these folds both go to the inside. And I'm going to just pull it up like so. 
Yep, it's on both sides. The top is ready for me to go back and add the last, put that screw back, and then with my, whatever my Phillips head screwdriver is, I don't think I could do that left-handed. It's not always that easy even to do it right-handed. So it just screws it in. Now, I think that you're going to be surprised at just how easy it is to personalize a wall lamp with some of your favorite photos. Remember, I love hearing your comments. If you haven't subscribed, then it'd be great if you did, and be sure to share us with your scrapbooking friends. I'm going to turn out the light. Bye for now.